What's up, Overwatch community? My name is Trips. Welcome to another episode in 2016 to Watchpoint, the show where we cover everything Overwatch related. Welcome to the new year, and I have once again with me Yiska. Hi. And our lovely editor, Volcha. <clears throat> Hello. Today we were talking about some of the news that has happened recently uh, concerning Overwatch, but mainly Blizzardish and how it concerns Overwatch as it is going to be generally formulated to be a uh, eSport, and that's what they want to go. Obviously, there's no single player or anything like that. A lot of you have probably heard it's a little bit, not old news, but it's definitely um, passed a little bit. MLG has been acquired by Blizzard Activision. They have kind of absorbed, but they haven't completely taken it over. As far as we have read in some of the articles, it's business as usual is their quote that they're using. So how do you think that this affects Blizzard? and some of their other games, which does, in fact, include uh, Call of Duty because it's Activision. And with Call of Duty being on the consoles and Overwatch being on the consoles, it kind of makes sense because they know the FPS console market as far as MLG goes. I mean, Activision does too, but MLG was a huge name in Call of Duty. I'd say it's an interesting fit for Overwatch, especially for consoles. MLG is seen. I'm not a big fan of MLG, and I haven't like consumed their content in a while, but they seem quite console-focused. And Blizzard going to console, that could be something interesting and an eSports scene that's that I wouldn't have seen coming. Mm -hmm. I just think it's... I think it's strange because I think you're right. MLG definitely seems console focused. I don't know of anything that they've done besides maybe I know back in the day they had StarCraft tournaments, but is StarCraft being sadly not as popular because the MOBA has just dominated StarCraft <clears throat> because it's just an, I mean, it's formulated from an RTS. It's just like the evolution of an RTS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had WoW at MLG2, by the way, so... And that was, I think, their biggest uh, PC viewership. And back in the day, obviously, they had Halo, which mm -hmm. was huge for them. So we were competing... Like, WoW was competing with Halo at the time, if I remember <coughs> correctly. And obviously, you can't hold a candle uh, to that. But still, WoW was pulling some impressive numbers in comparison to the other PC esports at the time. Mm -hmm. That was pre StarCraft 2, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they had a couple of uh, pretty successful PC games, I guess. And yeah, do you think it's gonna? Do you think that MLG is gonna help? Um, you know, help them figure out what they want to do as far as tournaments go for Overwatch, as far as casting and just setup in general, prize pool type stuff. Uh, brackets and all that other stuff. Do you think that MLG is, you know, a good fit and they're gonna offer something positive to Blizzard? I, th I think recently they've really grown into their own. Like, the production quality is definitely there. Mm -hmm. They seem like their PR is pretty awesome, I have to say. Like, they seem to be very community focused. So if you have something. Like, if you bemoan something on day one of a tournament, most of the time it will be fixed on the second day. So people will be working through the night to fi fix fix this thing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, it was quite well received. Like, I, I followed it because of um, a CSGO tournament they hosted. And that CSGO tournament led them to have this upcoming major. So they obviously did a pretty impressive job with it. Well, apparently liked it too. So North America is getting their first major on the back of MLG, just putting up uh, some great quality, basically. Okay. You were saying? Okay. Uh, <laughs> as far as MLG goes, though, like they're they used to be like the pivotal. Like if you had a tournament in MLG or if you were playing at MLG, you made it. Like you you were at the top of your game. You were there. Because MLG was like, I mean, just look at the logo and look at um, some of the uh, the production value and type of stuff like that back in the day. It was the NFL or the, you know, it was the majors. It was the professional gaming, competitive gaming. But now 
it seems like they've slowed down and they've been focused on uh, some of the lesser games like, you know, WoW, StarCraft and uh, Call of Duty. It's I, I'm not I don't want to, you know, shit on people who like Call of Duty, but it seems to be falling out of fashion a little bit compared to some of the other bigger competitive games like League and stuff like that. As far as viewership goes, they might be super tight-knit communities and they're super competitive, but as far as, you know, like ESL and DreamHack or... Uh, you said that they were parented over some DreamHack and ESL Dream are uh, parented. Yeah. So, so recently, um, DreamHack, both DreamHack and before that, uh, Turtle Entertainment, which basically produced ESL and IEM tournaments and all the big tournaments, like the biggest tournaments you probably know from your favorite game, um, is uh, produced <laughs> by Turtle Entertainment, and they were, I believe, bought out by a company called MTG, mm -hmm. and that is also true for DreamHack, and um, yeah, they're bas I think they're like a Swedish media company, pretty big, and yeah, they bought out, I think, ESL for $84 million. Don't pin me to this number, but it was something like that's also very interesting in in the context of you know worth when when they can buy ESL for eighty four, and then you know what what what's it for MLG, is it? It was forty forty eight forty three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so kind of tells you a little bit about the values of the different brands. Even though like if if MLG would have sold during the Halo days. Like that was obviously like it was pretty huge. From what I remember, you you had players like on milk cartons in the U.S. and shit. So, <laughs> but it's just like MLG as far as it could just be internet culture, you know, the dank memes and stuff like that. It just seems like MLG has kind of been associated with like Call of Duty and Mountain Dew, Doritos, it's just become like this meme. It's been a kind of a joke. So for Blizzard to acquire MLG in hopes to build this uh, esports scene for Overwatch to launch into, because it's gonna be like the first Overwatch tournament, unless it's hosted by third party, as far as Blizzard, it's gonna be MLG. It's gonna be on, you know, it's going to be like their logos and everything everywhere. So is it going to kind of bring a jokiness or like a less respected feel to Overwatch? I think there's a real actual danger for that. Um, <clears throat> if you read the uh, press release, they say they want to bring in more casual gamers into a more competitive setting, uh, have like kind of like a minor league type of setup. Um, they sort of outlined what they want to go for which is a tiered setup for um competitive and what could possibly happen is um it could be even more of a joke as you know casual type people want to break into the scene and it becomes kind of a joke in that way um like oh you're mlg it could become even more instead of like you know the youtube meme it could become like a legit like joke you could legit make fun of someone for trying to break into the the MLG site and like compete on ladders under like uh the minor leagues or something like that. Yeah, if that's if that's what you're saying if that's what uh you know, if they're trying to create almost a minor leagues if, you know, I'm going to use that that word, it could be like, "Oh, MLG is for the kids, the, you know, they're the casual competitive." Yeah. And then, then like that middle ground. There's something also, you know, the logo is a um is a console controller. It's console focused. So right off the bat, it has some pretty, um, pretty tough uh, image things to come over um, to get over that jokey stuff to be taken yeah. seriously. Especially like on the, the thing is, <clears throat> there's two things uh, um, that pop up into my mind when I think about this. So first thing is, is it really this jokey? Like obviously, there's these one. Uh, um, these, you know, videos where who like display, you know, 360 MLG, blah blah, you know that that is obviously kind of jokey, but like from a linguistic point of view, it, I often see it seen as like someone does an amazing play and you say that was MLG. So this is not necessarily in a bad way. Yeah. So uh, big Twitch yeah. streamers have have this meme sort of thing. You know, they have their emotes that say MLG and they're, 
you know, themed type. And the second thing is, if it was to become a joke and not serious, is that really a problem for a video game? You know? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. A thing because... that should be fun in a, in, first and foremost. And then, yeah, okay, if they misuse the word, it's like, how bad is that for a brand when a word gets jokingly, you know, used? There's no all such time. thing as bad press. You know, yeah. it's in people's mouths. I mean, it's kind of a household name. If you go to somebody in the gaming, you know, community and you say, do you know what MLG is? Most of the people are probably going to be like, yeah. And if you go around and you're like, oh, do you know what uh, Star League is? Unless they're super into competitive gaming, they're probably going to be like, mm, I don't know, a tournament or something. Uh, yeah, I would actually argue that we, we, we're talking about how ESL is worth more than MLG mm -hmm. based on the values. I don't see anyone saying that was ESL or ESL standing for anything but the league, right? Yeah. So... I'm pretty sure the guys at Turtle Entertainment would love if people were say that uh, that was ESL, mm -hmm. right? So that's just free publicity, and uh, you, you also see gaming companies more and more aware of these, you know, how do we get into everyday or casual language sort of thing. Yeah, like it's, it's it's not a coincidence that League of Legends is abbreviated LOL, right? Yeah. So as soon as you see that, the person that knows League will have both connections and that activates that's basically basic map marketing and mm -hmm. uh, cognitive li linguistics right <clears throat> so i don't know i think it can only be positive even yeah. if it's it, it means i mean it, it, it isn't too hard to if you want to be more professional put the guys in some f suits on camera and you know that's it basically yeah yeah there so. is that though that that drive to become like professional <laughs> and we're we want to compete with the people who are watching, uh, you know, football and stuff like that. We want to be taken seriously. We want to be in bars and we want to be, you know, part of the mainstream media. Because right now, although people don't, you know, it's kind of like we're on the forefront of the Internet culture, like the cord cutting culture and stuff where people don't care about TV. So we don't care so much about mainstream but we'd like to be talked about a bit more, and that's why they're trying to feature esports on stuff like ESPN. But I don't know if we want to be con to taken completely seriously, because if you do look at the numbers on Twitch, the people who have you know 30k viewers on a normal night, it, their chat is just rolling with emo like kappas and dank memes and stuff like that. So it's kind of like it's it's funny it's for the kids the kids will watch it and the kids the kids do know about like the mlg no like 360 no scope stuff yeah i guess it would um <clears throat> a good question would be like what would you guys want to see that would make you take it seriously uh, for me it would just all it would take would be like a tournament featuring the best players and then i would just that would be it i would take the uh it seriously so I guess in some sense it's a kind of a no-brainer how to take MLG seriously. Yeah, if they make tournaments and they sponsor Overwatch and they're like, all right, we flew in, uh, you know, eight teams and we're gonna have a small eight-team tournament or whatever, and they cast it and they have it all well done and production values up there and it's 100% sponsored by MLG, and you know, that that's that's cool. I'd watch it. I'm completely yeah. down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. I'm not like connected to DreamHack or like ESL or uh, Star League or something. I'm not like a fanboy. I just watch and I'm like, oh, that's who it's spawned. That's who this tournament's sponsored by. Cool. Well, but if but if it's like consecutively like, oh, Overwatch is on, it's MLG. Overwatch is on, it's MLG. Overwatch is on, it's MLG. People are going to grow that respect back for MLG. And Blizzard Activision has a lot of money to make that happen. I guess a follow-up point is usually um, MLG, what they want to do is they want to make like the the tournaments and then they also want to produce and have consumed content revolving around those um, tournaments like interviews, news about um, team tr changes, um, projections, stuff like that. They want um, that stuff to be consumed as well. The other um, outlets don't seem too interested in that. 
Um, so the would only you... the only one that I would disagree would be Riot because if you've watched any league tournaments, they do break and they do do like team analysis and like they do do stuff like uh, roster changes. They do talk about that and they talk about like they bring up like a caster and they have like a whole map and a huge screen. Well, do they like, do that mid cast or is it is it a separate It's like article? in between games. Okay, I'm kind of talking about like separate articles. Like a reason why you would go to MLG website on an off season, like go to oh, MLG okay. website. You're talking about like a whole side show, like not yeah. during the tournament. Well, yeah. I'm talking about a place where you'd go not just to watch a tournament. And I think that's what they kind of want to build. Yeah, they tried that in the past that when they acquired Godfrak. And Godfrak was huge for the CS uh, community back when CS was basically the biggest esports in the CGS days and everything. And uh, they acquired a pretty dead Godfrak. Like, it was past uh, a point of no return. We probably know, knew that after. But uh, they, yeah, they tried to have like a sideshow and um, try to, you know, bind the community and have a place where you go to talk about your games or something. Right. Mm -hmm. it, in, in nowadays, like, I mean, ESL has been doing like trying to uh, to organize the stuff around their tournaments too. Like they have, you you can always play ESL tournaments, right? Gathers or something. As all that is there, they have content creators working for um, ESL, but um, th that always felt like an yeah, just a minor sideshow. And I wonder if like that really you know helps them like that that is that their return of investment into these people who work there full time for that content is really worth it i can't imagine it because let's let's be real esports is organized on reddit nowadays and okay. well i was i was trying to look for a segue to bring this up yeah do you think that the overwatch community currently on reddit is looking for serious gaming like talks besides tournaments do you think they're looking for uh tr player drafts and trades and statistics on certain players and stuff like that currently no fucking way really i mean the the current state is kind of not interested in anything to do with that to kind of put it nicely they're kind of concerned about getting um beta access <laughs> and yeah. having beta come back I mean, I can't, I can't, what's, what's, I want to put this the right way. I can't blame them because, hell, I love beta access, but I'm patient where it seems like the Reddit community, because it's the internet, they just can complain and just complain and just complain and just complain because they think it's funny or they think it's going to you know blizzard's finally gonna be like all right guys we'll give you open beta or something like that i know it feels like a rant that meant it's meant to be clean cleansing for them in a way like some some of the stuff is obviously that like i i, I don't necessarily mind for instance the people are asking for if that gpu can run it if it's in a gpu intensive game okay that's questions that you can ask during the downtime but in general the subreddit seems to be very much in the way that art is upvoted a lot mm-hmm for good reason, uh, no problems there. But then the most inane, drivel, stupid, fucking suggestions, or like, I don't know, p people that. Have you have you seen any discussion about uh, what's the word for character locking or um, change locking? It seems. What was that? Uh, you know, you know the big discussion before they locked the beta about uh you shouldn't be able to change characters during game or like there should only be one of every character i don't yeah. know if that's come up recently because i've kind of avoided the reddit it seems since. like like any discussion let alone those benign ones that come up all the time like a rash um mm -hmm. any discussion kind of follows this format it's either liked and then it, it one opinion comes out of it and it's heavily upvoted and everything else is downvoted mm -hmm. or the whole thread is just downvoted and no one even pays attention to it so as far as like any discussion even if it's been not like stupid is not happening on the subreddit yeah i mean 
I'm I'm not gonna I don't want to sit here and bash the subreddit because there's definitely still people on there that you know they generally care about the game and they're just there trying to look for information and stuff like that. But there is just like any other Reddit, just like any other part of the internet. Although maybe it seems like right now there's a lot more of them there uh, because they they're salty about beta. It's kind of a toxic environment right now. But I bet there there's definitely some good people over there. And I hope that the Reddit, uh, the subreddit increases. I hope it, it gets better when the game goes back into live beta as well as when it launches. But we can leave that subreddit to uh, another discussion later. We can hop back on the MLG uh, train. So we started to talk about it a little bit. ESPN style channel is what uh, MLG, Activision Blizzard, them all three together group. That's what they want to produce and i have a quote here so this is a quote from an article this is the interview that they did with uh i'm sorry i don't have the actual who they interviewed but this is um about the acquisition this is a quote from blizzard uh what we think is missing is a real premium channel similar to espn that services the esports community with the best content available so i don't know exactly what they mean by this does this mean that they're going to make a tv channel or if they're going to make a twitch channel or if they're going to you know try to host their own videos on like a website without going into the next topic what do you think um i think there's a lot that could be said about this one particular quote because it's very interesting um a lot of people are seem to be reading into it to mean like there's going to be a tv station on cable like well i mean cable. when you relate things to espn it's like it's i don't TV. i don't yeah when they make the comparison that's obvious but i don't think they were really going for that i mean they uh, espn is kind of dying um they I would just be... think it's an idea like I... a, a outline I think what they're going for is they want to be a hub for information regarding um, pro sports, kind of like ESPN has become. They want to become the hub. Um, there's not. They want to kind of monopolize that information or have the best content and have reasons for people to come to their channel. Um, it has nothing to do with TV. They're not stupid. They would be stupid as hell <laughs> to come up with a TV station dedicated to eSports. That would be ridiculous. I mean, it's been tried b before in the past, and it's, it didn't work. Plus, hasn't I mean, it, ES hasn't some, uh, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but hasn't some eSports been on ESPN? I think yes. so, yeah. There's, I didn't see it. There, I read some articles about it. <laughs> And Did it wasn't it get any well. viewership at all? I know I didn't watch it, but um, I I think it wasn't on ESPN. It was on ESPN three or some shit. Yeah, you know where there's like college football games and uh, and stuff. The the feedback from the you know normal crowd that usually just watches sports was quite negative from what I've seen. Yeah. You know they were like, Ooh, what, what, why would I watch that? Ooh. Dude, yeah. what's and this then... game with toys? Fuck them! Yeah, 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 and. Uh, not sure about the viewership, but like one thing you have to understand is these people working at TV stations are grasping for all the straws they can get because they are working in a dying medium, right? And then there's our demographic, like the best, like the most valuable, advertisable, uh, you know, uh, what's what's. The name uh, demographic of between 16 and 35 male gamers with a lot of most of the time d disposable income like mm -hmm. that's perfect to advertise to yeah. so what do you do you try to get into the boat and that's that's a movement we've seen recently like we talked about MTG buying out these uh, tournament organizers then uh, with the, the there has been this e league going on, um, where uh, Mark Cuban is in league in League of Legends now, like is invested For in that. People who don't know who Mark Cuban is, he owns the Dallas Mavericks, correct? And yes. he's on Shark Tank, so he's kind of honestly, which is weird, he's popular with middle-aged America because he's, you know, for. The male and female crowd that watches uh, basketball, I'm horrible at mainstream sports. The Mavericks are definitely basketball. Um, 
and the people who watch stuff like Shark Tank, they know who Mark Cuban is. So if the, if their kids are like, oh, hey, mom, Mark Cuban's on this. It was CSGO, correct? Yes. It's like uh, they can League of Legends folk, Mark Cuban. Okay. League of Legends. He played against the CEO of Intel. I don't know. Intel Extreme Masters. Like he played a show match against the CEO of Intel. Does he know how to play League of Legends? Dude, he played Ziggs. He got one kill and died like 13 times in an <laughs> ARAM. Oh, and they played an really... ARAM. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And right. like it, it, it it's was kind of like they're attracting, like... they could attract a, a demographic that they can't get on the internet because I don't know, uh, you know, if he, like the. 50 year old crowd i know the people that i know can you know they barely know how to use facebook there's something else about our demographic and this medium that's interesting that's different than tv tv you got to produce the shit you just produce it produce it and you got to fill 24 hours worth of time so you come up with a lot of like artificial half-baked horse shit while like our medium we kind of make the stuff ourselves i mean fans make it that's what the medium's kind of about so yeah as far as us i mean if you want csgo content no problem finding 24 hours worth of content in 24 hours just from from uh, players and i don't know if you guys uh, do you guys know who like screw attack and mega 64 are hmm. mm -hmm. no there are youtube content creators they've actually i've recently found on twitch they have 24-hour streams of old videos. So it's like you're turning on a TV channel. Yeah. Like reruns? So, yeah, of just like <laughs> years worth of content. And That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, it's like you could, go, you could go watch those exact videos on YouTube or you could flip on uh, their stream on Twitch and they just collect money 24 hours a day for anyone that comes in that channel. And I think that might be what blizzard's aiming for yeah well you could do both you could could have a good vod system right you could have a channel that runs 24 7 um like one thing that i often see requested with netflix is that people don't really like they come off work and they don't want to really want to choose their content they would love if netflix had just a random channel that you could switch on and have on for background noise mm -hmm. so for that I guess they could make a 24-hour stream and then, you know, during non-peak times they would rebroadcast or something. And then other times um, they would obviously have a VOD system mm -hmm. um, where you could just, you know, you know, your favorite talk show, for instance, on MLG TV, you would talk about it and would be able to, you know, just uh, watch it whenever you like. I mean, that's pretty much the YouTube system in that sense. And then let, let's, I mean... Let's be uh, honest here. In, if you think about the video market of video, uh, like YouTube is obviously the, the biggest thing, but there is other competitors. Who is competing with Twitch? Zubu, who is b basically a uh, money laundering hitbox. bullshit hitbox. site. Hitbox. They're yeah, real that, small. But, but that's, yeah, exactly. So uh, why YouTube, would you not YouTube try YouTube gaming? To <laughs> yeah, yeah. YouTube is trying to get into it. But I, I was watching a CS tournament today. The Face It stream had something like, I think, 30,000 viewers when I watched. Mm -hmm. The YouTube thing had 347. Like, I'm not sure if that... Uh, 347, that, period, not thousand. Period, period. So you see the preference based on that. Because people actually enjoy, like, Jesus fucking Twitch plebs, dude. They ac actually Kappa. enjoy the... Yeah. Kappa. They, did. they love well, it. And I honestly, I don't read chat that much, but if they're having fun, whatever, man, all, you know, all be known to them. I don't know how the hell you can read that. It, It's like, if you post a comment, it's gone within okay. two seconds. The thing is, Twitch for me, and I, that's my guilty pleasure. I don't read Twitch chat. It's more like, I, the way I receive it is like emotions of a couple of, like I'm Goku, okay? I'm channeling this... <laughs> <laughs> fucking ball of energy and then you know that the entire energy through fucking little emoticons is transferred to me when people spam mlg because lyric just headshotted a guy okay uh, right and i think that's how most people uh, pr perceive it obviously then there's copy pa pasta 
where people th then it's maybe oh red. I yeah. I remember watching like TIs and stuff, and they have. Uh, so this is something they could honestly actually steal from Dota. I don't know if they do this in like CS:GO or anything, but Dota's become this thing where it's kind of a chill. It's kind of like, hey, there's a tournament running, but also if you're not super big into the tournament and you're just big into the personalities and the caster, we bought a house and there's just cameras on 24/7 and people are like playing Mario Kart and like hanging out and answering questions. And it's like more content that's not the tournament. So you can like watch the games and then you can just, if you get tired of watching the games, you can come chill and hang out with, they honestly during, the, during TI4, I think it was, they bought like 12 cats and just had a cat cam and it was just like cats. <laughs> and that was honestly nice. like, I went in at like four in the morning and there's 8,000 people watching a box of kittens. <laughs> nice. I mean, there's there's room for that, right? I, was, I still remember. Um, you, have you ever heard of Home Story Cup? No. It's like a basically there's a guy who was pretty big in German uh, Warcraft Three, was one of the best players, won the national ESL tournaments, and then he went over to ESL, um, then organized some stuff there, and then he started in his living room the Home Story Cup, and it, at the start it was like I don't know, six StarCraft Two players. Mm -hmm. Like he was friends with, and then it started growing. Next I mean, was not, bigger. Not that I want to make excuses, but like getting six players because it's a single player game is a yeah. little bit different than you know. Yeah, like... obviously. But but then it grew. It keeps growing. Like when I I visited one because it was a setup where he had a a, a flat, a pre pretty big flat over a pub, so. The pub was also esports uh, themed for the time the tournament was held, mm -hmm. and then you could go there, have a beer. Then I sometimes for that, man. players would come down and give autographs or talk to the fans. And now he has a fucking studio, dude. It's like a huge, um, old, I don't know, factory type of thing. Yeah, it's just gigantic. It's like, that thing. It's right? like for uh, Dota, they have BTS Beyond the Summit. Like, every year, they just have a bigger house and a bigger house, and it's getting ridiculous. Um, but to reel it back in, I don't want to, you know, this is still... Let me just... What, one thing, I, like, what the, uh, what the conclusion from that is, is maybe we gamers don't want the professionalism as much as we want to socialize with our top players, mm -hmm. maybe be closer to them, Maybe we don't want suits. Maybe we want the guys bullshitting and shit talking each other. But we want to be taken seriously as not in like. We don't, we don't want to be taken seriously as like, oh, this is you know suit and tie and we're super professional and on the up and up. But we just don't want to be seen as a joke, to yep. other people. And you there's know? middle ground, definitely. I think that's what we want. We want the middle ground. We want to be the. You know, Twitch chat, having fun, chilling out, making jokes, because that's what video games about. It's about having fun. But it's also, you know, if it's like, oh, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to a football game. We want to be able to be like, oh, hey, man, I got tickets to, you know, an Overwatch tournament. You want to go? Oh, hell yeah. Like, we just want to be taken. We don't want to be treated as children. Yeah. But. To bring it back away from, you know, mainstream sports and stuff, what do you think that means for Overwatch? Do you think Overwatch has the content, has the depth <clears throat> to be able to make, like, statistical reports on players and their specific characters that they use and stuff like that? At, I mean, at the moment, it's kind of hard to analyze because it is still beta. We don't know if they're going to add anything. We don't know if, you know, this is the game that we get right now. But do you think it's because, like, League and Dota, they have hundreds of characters. And when players pick characters, it's one character. You know, so you can pick those, like, their specific players. Or, like, CSGO, it's like, this guy's the opera. This guy's, you know, I don't, I don't, do they have, this is completely off the radar, but it's something I thought of. Do they have a specific planter? Planter as in watch. The bomb. In no, nah, CSGO? No. no, most of the time. Like, there's roles where you could give the bomb more 
successfully to, to aggressive probably, people or defensive yeah, not, people. Yeah, you would you wouldn't give it to the entry fragger who's the first around the corner because then you give the information where the bomb is because sometimes you want to fake it out or something. Yeah, yeah. right. So so you want maybe your third player to have it. Sometimes you maybe want to even have your lurker have it, but then you always have run into the problem that he might be killed off in the back and now you're out of position and now they can secure the bomb. So yeah. Okay. But anyways, do you think that Overwatch has the <laughs> amount of content because Obviously, it's not going to be like 24-7 Overwatch content, but do you think Overwatch is going to be off in the shadows, like just a couple tournaments here and there? Or do you think they're going to be able to make those off-the-wall shows of, you know, pros hanging out or statistical analysis of games? I think it's kind of, it's still a little early to tell, but what, we can, air, but what we can do is we can look at what has been happening and kind of just observe it. I mean, we can see that there's definitely interest in forming teams. Serious fucking interest in forming teams for this game. It's and crazy. There's, and there's serious tournaments happening. Not as serious as the teams, but pretty serious tournaments. Um, so, from a <coughs> professional standpoint, they seem to see a value in investing in Overwatch. Um, a lot, a lot of people who have played Overwatch, not... Um, not like professional people, but a lot of like media personalities are like, this is the game. Like Blizzard has created the game to, you know, break the scene or whatever. There's... And whether it may, you know, they've said that about a bunch of games, but whether or not it's going to be <clears throat> that is the question. This is sort of a little bit off topic, but Overwatch is filling a niche in shooters that hasn't existed for hasn't been filled for a very long time. Even mm. Team Fortress 2 failed to fill the niche, and that's kind of the niche that was left when uh, arena shooters fell away. Um, I know you're a big arena person. So. I love arena shooters. Um, fast shooting play and projectile play, I love it. And for the longest time, there's just been nothing for players like me. And usually, uh, the, the whole scene, um, old Unreal players who went pro and uh, made money and, like, or like legit known for their skills mm -hmm. i know that they're probably looking at overwatch being like hey maybe uh maybe i won't be playing unreal uh unreal live in the uh, corners of the internet where no one will be seeing me anymore that's a good game though i played that yeah the new one it's completely free so anyone who is interested in overwatch and you want a good arena shooter right now go play unreal it's completely free it's kind of i think it's a big download though I'd also suggest Reflex. That's one to definitely look at. I heard about that recently. It's but... a little bit more specific, but it's it's excellent. Mm -hmm. But back on the topic, as far as uh, you know, the resurgence yeah. and the popularity of arena shooters. So I think people are looking at this game and like really, they're like hungry. They want some some steak. They want a steak. They've been fed, you know, like dried up pork chops for 15 years or whatever. They want to, they see this game as maybe it's a steak. So, and a lot of times these people, um, who are, were, grew up in the arena scene, um, they're older now and they're kind of yeah. like investors and they're kind of like business guys. So when That's they see, true. so maybe people it's kind of, money. it's kind of coloring things for them. Um, a little bit, maybe, I mean, I know it is for me. I want Overwatch to be a fast paced, uh, projectile shooter that I can really sink my teeth into. Um, just based on past games that I know I love. I feel like that's going to, those are going to be junk rat players. <laughs> oh, I'll be playing the shitload of Junkrat. I know it. Uh, but it's, I mean, this is big names. This is Blizzard. Now it's MLG, Activision. So it's not like it's some out of the blue, you know, third party. No, that wouldn't be third party, but out of the blue, like game development being like, hey guys, I mean, sorry, I played Paladins, high res. Uh, I mean, it's not high, it's not that high res isn't respected, but they're obviously not as big as Blizzard. So it's not like, you know, people are going to invest in some small company. These are huge names. Yeah. So. Yeah. I uh, think it would be good. Yeah, the, th the thing is, okay, here's, here's my concern. You say you want to create ESPN of eSports. Mm -hmm. What's ESPN about? Often in-depth analysis based on statistics that you don't want to provide us with. Hmm. Jinx. Like, 
that statement obviously came from Bobby Kotick, who's the uh, CEO of Activision okay. Blizzard. So that could like there's for me there's a there's a mismatch of um, approaches in a sense that on the one hand you have the stats based analysis and then highlight of top players, and then on the other hand you have the you know dumped down experience of not providing the stats of not going super hardcore on these mechanics then uh, rooting it more in in team play maybe okay you can al analyze that probably yeah. but like and it, that's not just true for overwatch but for all the games right so it's this I don't weird know if there's so much to analyze when you don't have the tools to analyze or you don't want your audience to analyze. Hmm. It's the weird mashup of like, we want to be professional, we want to be the best, but we still want to be like friendly to casuals and stuff like that. We, we still want to like middle ground it. And it's a weird road. It's, it's like they're going for two different ideals here. It'd be like watching baseball without like RBI statistics and, and all that stuff. It, <laughs> it would be kind of odd mm -hmm. well he, he hit the ball pretty well with that stick thingy and yeah. <laughs> that's like the the rocket t uh the pharaoh shot was pretty on point and yeah. yeah so i don't know i think though knowing the gaming community like before the game was even in i don't even know if that's true i don't want to make that statement but i know during the game in beta i went to the subreddit i didn't know if it was going to be beforehand but they had like spreadsheets on spreadsheets of like character damage health uh you know at like bullet speed stuff like that they had uh map layouts where the health packs are all this stuff and it's not like unless blizzard censors the content if they let these people who are you know funding if some guy some old arena shooter guys like hey i like these guys they know what they're talking about i'm gonna fund them uh and uh you know, put them on this ESPN like channel. I don't even know what they're gonna call it. First of all, that'd be an, another thing. But they're gonna fund this these guys, and they're gonna make this show, and they're gonna go over statistics, whether Blizzard likes to give it out or not. They're gonna talk about the stats and like the um, the strategies that they used and how close the games were versus stuff like that. Because maybe Blizzard doesn't want to talk about it, but I know uh, gamers, and they'll break it down. They will well, break this down. It's hard, though, without in-game statistics. I mean, you, you you would want to, say, be able to tell a viewer, um, X player has X headshot rate on X map. You know, that you'd want to drop that statistic. Without someone sitting there, like, you know, tallying him off each time he plays, yeah. you're not going to get that anywhere. So uh, you're left with the analysis of, like, X player is... A good player on this map, which doesn't say much. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the the thing is, here here is how analysis works, or how you sniff out narratives. First step, you look at the stats. What do, do the stats tell you? Then you take the extraordinary, you know, outlier stats, and then you do the eye test, right? Then then you look, okay. Do the numbers tell the story that my eye can see, so to speak? Mm -hmm. And then you look at certain events. Has this reoccurred with this player, maybe? Yeah? Hmm. Step one, erase right now. It's all eye tests. It's all community opinion about a player. It's all um, uh, certain events, you know, highlight reels. Like, the way we are right now, pe people in other shooters, like in CS, where you have a lot of in-depth stats, people get already overrated based on highlight clips mm -hmm. from their movie or like from one round on in one tournament. Then you look at the stats and say, okay, he wasn't actually he was actually he had a pretty shitty year in comparison, right? He yeah. had this one amazing play, but then he gets overrated. You, you, it's it's very hard to get to, to convince people of this bias when you don't have the stats. I imagine it would be hard too for teams to suss out what they need out of a player um, with no stats. That might be pretty difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, we need to replace our our tracer for whatever reason. Let's look for a tracer player with this particular stat at this rate. It's just going to be kind of like 
I know in Here's the Storm, because it's the same, you know, under the same umbrella company, that they don't produce the, like, stats uh, as well as, you know, say, League or Dota do. What they've been forced to do is not look for new, you know, top pub stompers or something like that. They're basically just, like, trading in teams. Like, they're being like, oh, that team broke up and we need a new X position. All right, let's look in people we know are good or, like, they're friends and stuff like that. They can't just pick up. Some guy just can't rise out. And I could be wrong. There could be, you know, a couple things. But this is coming from podcasts that I've listened to from the Tempo Storm guys. They, you know, look within. They can't really, you know, look in the huge crowd of public players and some guy can't stand out for being amazingly accurate or something like that. Or have, like, some huge win ratio, rather. Um, like, it's it's not even that I demand this of Blizzard, in, necessarily. Because if Bl Blizzard looks back at their own history, mm -hmm. most of the time, the amazing ideas that really push the thing to the next level is community-created. Because the system was fairly open, and it allowed amazing, talented, amazingly talented people to create tools for us to in, in, enhance the experience. I, I still remember we didn't have any streams, obviously. We didn't have uh, live, live viewing. And some guy in Warcraft 3 came up with Vark TV. And you basically connected via the LAN client onto a server, and then you could watch the game that was currently played online. Then you put on your Winamp or whatever radio, and you had a caster com commentating to it. Like, nothing there was done by Blizzard at all. Mm -hmm. It was all community created. Look at Hearthstone. There is no statistics in Hearthstone, but there's the opportunity for Hearth Tracker tracking uh, tools who gather the statistics and Blizzard has said that we're fine with that. Yeah. Provide that for Overwatch 2. Give us the opportunity to be hardcore in that sense. Have yeah. it in some fucked up text file. I don't care. We have to read it so out. So you think a third-party client's going to come in and start making stats if no, if Blizzard's not going to... I'm not even sure if that's possible right now, but if, if that's if that's well, possible... Well, because everything is... I mean, whether you know you can bitch left and right about it not being on the global scoreboard, that's there's stuff that is stored personally for you to view. Your kills and your yeah. deaths. That is stored on your client. I mean, think about Heroes of the Storm. I would have long since stopped playing if it wasn't for Hotslocks. Yeah. Because the ranking system they have is someone's, fucking garbage. They're, they're, someone's dude. going to do that. Yeah. Because if it's if it's if hot logs is available, someone has to make watch logs or <laughs> something. I can already see that the competitive players will all have one, you know, tool that gathers the end screen they have. Yeah. Puts it onto a server and then creates all the statistics for the entire game, so you can compare yourself to them. Yeah. Yeah. Does it need really need to have? To, uh, does it have to be this way? I guess maybe, yeah. But I can see myself already that people are going to create uh, third, pro third party programs of th something that should really be in the game, and then down the line it will be adapted. Same with WoW add-ons. Like, be smart about it. Offer this, uh, offer the opportunity. Open, uh, open up the development, your information you have about the game, and then people will come and will create. Do you awesome think? Stuff for you. Do you think that? I'm trying to figure out a way to put it. If if this is already happening in Heroes, because Heroes is the closest thing that's to the way that they're handling it. If this is gonna happen anyways, do you think Blizzard is just kind of being like, "Eh, we're just gonna focus on the game. We're gonna do what we want, and let the community make it better," because the community will do these things anyways. So. Blizzards may, maybe they're just not focusing on it because they obviously still want to do what they want to do. But do you think they take that into account at all, or is that just like a reaction to them being stubborn? Um, it's hard to say, but I'd say like their focus is on gameplay and getting the game right right now, and not mm -hmm. on that stuff. And given the typical Blizzard development cycle, that stuff comes later on, and it gets a super exciting. Um, the community gets really excited about it when it comes out then. So, in a sense, it, it kind of works out. Yeah. 
But that we're talking like two years down the line. Yeah. All right. Um, back on the MLG topic. So this is what I wanted to avoid talking about because we're kind of everything kind of meshes together, and I want to separate it a bit. So MLG TV, the huge streaming site. Um. <laughs> I've never seen a single stream on uh, MLG t- TV. I, I don't think I've ever been to the website until tonight because, you know, right before the show. So when I went to the show, there was roughly 20 streamers. Uh, so if you want, go ahead. Stream on MLG. You'll probably stick out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, I'm not even sure if you can just sign up and stream there. Not 100% sure. That's, that's the thing that's is nice. I, don't, I don't really know about it, so I don't want to talk crap about it. But it's obviously not popular. We know that. That's not you know anything new and youtube gaming and hitbox are trying to compete with twitch and i've never been to hitbox uh but youtube gaming is not doing well um i actually I mean, they're like i actually like hitbox quite a bit there i like them better than twitch but i'm not gonna get any viewers on hitbox kappa <laughs> yeah dude you can't kappa on hitbox i think you no you can't cap it with the face i think there's some other equivalent thing though can you forehead? Can you can you OP baby OP? Rage? Dude, you, you can't, <laughs> you can't even like, baby rage on hitbox. What about you know nothing about video games, dude, if you don't enjoy that, obviously. Uh, I know. Um the, the that's what's important for them too. Like <laughs> I'm just look, looking at this top streamer right now. The chat is basically dead. Like no. Yeah. Hmm. I know. That's the thing too is when I want to I could be completely stupid. But when I went to MLG TV, I was watching the Halo thing for about 10 minutes trying to look, and it doesn't display a viewer count. So I couldn't even, not even like, I was looking for like a chat list of uh, people in the chat even, and I was going to count it myself. Hmm. But I didn't see it, so I can't say I, how many people were exactly watching. I actually see, like on some streams to see it, I guess it's maybe down to the broadcaster. I see someone with 1,000 here. Chat's pretty dead for him too, though. Mm-hmm. So, but it's the thing just is, not popular. It's not popular. You can't. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yep. But the thing is, the software or the the client itself isn't that shitty. Like yeah. it's, I, I I've used it before, and back in the day, like obviously we're talking 2009, 2010, that was a pain in the ass. The video client. But now it's super smooth. I would argue it's better than Twitch, because. But the like, community is not there. Yeah, it's the community is not that. Like the chat, Twitch is way the better. Than that. It's the I don't know how they do their like subscription or like how they pay their content producers, but yeah, there's subscriptions apparently. But follow mechanics, tip jar, you got it all. Hmm. Wait, they have a tip jar, like on the website. Yes. Whereas I know for Twitch, they're just kind of like, man, we're just gonna let third party places because mm. they have like Twitch alerts and stuff like that. Um, do you think, do you think that Overwatch is gonna, do you think they're gonna do anything exclusive on MLG.TV to try to drive traffic there for Overwatch? Like, maybe when the beta comes back, they're gonna give, like, an MLG streamer, uh, Overwatch (laughs) access. I guess if they're going to keep MLG TV, um, I would be pretty surprised if they didn't do something like that. Um... In that quote before that you read, um, one of the words they used is premium, and that's kind of like a marketing corporate word that means a couple different things. Um, And it could mean that they're looking for subscriptions. It could mean that they're looking for, uh, I don't know, they're looking to corner and they're looking to get money. Um, Yeah, at the end of the day, whether, you know, a lot of people hate to talk about it and a lot you'll sell out here left and right, they're they're a company. They want to make money. However, I think I think Overwatch is kind of governed by its own set that's um, a little bit divorced of Blizzard Activision. I think they kind of want to market their game their own way, and that's through Twitch, which is they've done through the past. Um, I think that's what the Blizzard team would want to, uh, the Overwatch team will want to do is you know do it through Twitch because that's what worked before and they reached the audience they needed before and it achieved the perfect result. Mm-hmm. Um, if they get, if they're told, no, you're going to do it through MLG gaming, um, that's going to suck for a lot of people. That game? 
I don't think it'll be dead game. I think it won't get the type of views it deserves. And I think a lot of people are just going to be like, I, I don't know that platform. That's a that's not open in my tab. I'm uh, Twitch yeah. is open in my tab. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> I mean, the that thing could, is, that could be possible for you know little kids. They're just they don't know about it. But it's it it's super hard for them to make the transition between obviously the benefits of Twitch promoting your product with Twitch streams. Mm-hmm. And then making it ex- exclusive to MLG, there has to be a slow transition. Like obviously, there is content that people will want to watch, no matter where it's streamed, such as BlizzCon. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. we didn't have it on. Uh, did we have it on Twitch? Yeah, we had. Yeah, it. BlizzCon yeah. was on Twitch. Yeah, uh, yeah, true. Yeah, forget it. But still, like, they also have their own bro- broadcasting software, and there's obviously uh, paid content for that uh, that too. You know the the whole ticket, the twenty five dollars thing. Yeah. If that was to run all over MLG, for instance, I don't know. Like um, MLG also has done these uh, subscri- subscription models back in the day. It, it's it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> if you think about it that a streamer who produces infinitely less quality content can have upwards of 11,000 subscribers at the same price MLG wanted to do it, but MLG had less subs- subscribers at the time, I'm pretty sure. Well, that's person- uh, there's personality driven behind that, you know. Yeah, but there's there's also, obviously you can't change consumer behavior, but there's an obvious irrationality that paying a company that consists of people that do content you enjoy is somehow less worth uh, like a worse place for your money than this guy that sits in front of a camera and goes like, or, or girl, sits up for, oh, thank you very much. And, you know, appealing to you emotionally. And <laughs> did you like my, my, yeah, that was my good. Stream? <laughs> yeah. Let me prop up my boobs. <laughs> you got to no, get the web, it, put the webcam right was, here too. Bro fist. <laughs> Blotcha was about to tip me here. Like he, he um, was about to get out his credit card, bam, and then <laughs> pay me for my. You just wrecked your webcam, yeah. but. Yeah. So in in a horrible world, in a world where everything goes wrong, right? BlizzCon, MLG, BlizzCon's not streamed on Twitch. And you have to go to MLG to watch Heroes, StarCraft, WoW Arena, uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone's huge. Huge on Twitch. So you have to go Heroes, StarCraft, WoW, Hearthstone, Overwatch. You have to go to MLG now. In a horrible world, this happens. Ooh. Well, you could say, I don't know if that would happen. Uh, or I'm, not saying for, I'm not saying for, like, just... Every day, I'm saying just for BlizzCon. Yeah, or you could even say uh, in a horrible world, you would have to buy a subscription to MLG to watch, and they to watch the Overwatch beta uh, oh stuff reveal that they're gonna do before the beta comes back. You know, like buy a ticket and then, and then you'll get to see you know the new progression system live. New characters. Yeah. That would be a horrible world, and they'd probably make a pretty good amount of money doing it, but. They'd probably uh, buy an MLG the... buy an MLG subscription and get beta access. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, there, there you go. Uh... They would break. <laughs> they would break in the money. There you go. They made it. <laughs> the thing is, that that is a very big concern for me in every single part. How ruthless do they want to be with this? Mm-hmm. They say they want ever they want the, this to be the ESPN of esports. Okay, what's esports for them? Is that just their games? Is it Counter Strike Two? Is it Valve games in general? Maybe it's not. Maybe they're ruthless. Ruthless about this. Do you think? Maybe really. I mean, let's put it in like a business perspective. Do I want League of Legends and Dota on my platform when I'm trying to make Heroes a popular game? That well, depends on what you want your MLG platform to be. Do you want, with your business expertise, help these production teams? make it viable and then grow the the brand in a way that you make money from that or do you want to have it as a marketing tool for your games and that's that's basically what it all comes down to right yeah. how ruthless they are going to be is 
the idea they have behind it. Is it a marketing investment or is it something they want to make money from? There's an interesting line in that um, interview too where they talk about wanting to develop tools for third party um, developers and why would you need tools to stream content on their site? Um, what does that mean? What are they? That's what I'm wondering. What are these tools that they want to develop for third party uh, developers, and what are they going to try to get out of it? That's like a. Are you that's saying something key. to like replace XSplit and OBS? No, like something that they can monetize um, hmm. from tournaments and the platform that the game is hosted on maybe like okay may, here's a possible way a um let's say you have a third party program that has a launcher that pops up on the launcher you could have an ad for mlg that that's developed with the company to pop it in there maybe that's one way like in launcher ads stuff like that yeah what if something i just thought of you know the voice the third the voice over ip that they're developing what if that's the same client and you can watch MLG in that client? That'd be interesting. The the one thing that like it seems plausible as an idea, that the one thing I think where that's not as likely is is because this thing hasn't been in the pipes for all too long. Yeah. Because uh, what what we've read is that MLG has sat at a table with Yahoo before. So, if in that October. was still Yep. If that was still on the table, like, and the voice over IP thing, that was obviously a consideration before the MLG deal was on the table. Mm -hmm. So uh, they could do it if it's in the works, which highly doubt it, I guess. Okay. Well, we don't want to speculate too much because we could just come up with random BS all night. Do you, as like a final thought, do you, what do you think the best thing that could come out of MLG for specifically Overwatch? Because I know, I'm sorry anyone who's watching, we've kind of focused on the MLG aspect of it, um, but it does affect, Blizzard as a company does affect Overwatch. So, but what do you think the acquisition of MLG uh, in a positive light, what do you think it'll give Overwatch? I think uh, just overall it'll be more content um for Overwatch in general, there'll be more people with a good production level. More people writing about Overwatch, casting, making tournaments, more casters, more people analyzing. So just in general, it'll make Overwatch a bigger scene overall. Yeah, yeah. And right now, why we don't know specifics? One thing is that it's a great indication of where Activision Blizzard wants to take, you know their focus to and that includes Overwatch 2 like when when you had any doubts that how invested Blizzard was in pushing Overwatch as an eSport more so than the other games that's like one more criteria to think okay maybe they are going to be full serious mode about it right and maybe this acquisition also will you know, high ups say make this an esports exp uh, experience, mm -hmm. and the developer is like, "Okay, let's do that," and maybe it influences developer decisions too. So, mm. yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, we we just don't know. We really don't know. I don't think, I I don't think it's anything horrible. I didn't see the acquisition as like, oh no. Yeah, but. Anything else? Any final thoughts from anybody you want to chime in? Nothing? All right. Uh, Yuska, you got anything going on on your uh, channels? How are them, how are them beta, beta diaries going? <laughs> uh, I, I keep saying I want to produce content, but I know there's like, stuff outside of gaming popping up recently. Mm -hmm. And obviously there have been holidays and stuff. And so I've been uh, Overwatch is closed. Them. Yeah, I, I guess there are certain concepts which you could describe that will probably, hopefully, hold true when once the beta com comes online. But there's obviously stuff that will just fundamentally change. And yeah, it it, it feels like okay, am I going to sink my teeth teeth into this for six hours or something, doing the research, doing the writing, or doing the video producing, then look at the patch notes and say, "Fuck you, dude." 
<laughs> this it's is just... completely irrelevant. Yeah. It's hard in beta. They could, I mean, especially when the beta relaunches. It could relaunch with some huge patch and just change everything. Yeah. Like, I hope for so. Instance, That'd be cool. There's, there's certain, for instance, if they erase the damage percentage received from damage received, boom, game changed. Everything mm -hmm. is different. If they make the ultimates take twice as long to charge, boom, everything is different. Power levels uh, differentiate. Maybe Mercy isn't the best support anymore because uh, the majority of her power is in her ultimate. Mm -hmm. And then uh, because ultimates are less frequent, you know, other characters become better because their basic kit is just better. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. There's There's a lot of development stuff that Makes me not that, uh, you know, enthusiastic. Motivated? Enthusiast. Yeah, motivated okay. to what it. All right, for sure. Everyone, everyone can understand that. I mean, we're going to keep doing this, so this is where you can look for Yiska as well as uh, your Twitter, which I'm guessing will be above. And yep. Vulture, how are uh, you, you streaming anymore, man? Uh, off and on. I haven't streamed in a little while. Um, I've actually picked up Life is Feudal again. It's kind of like a crazy. What is that? It's kind of like an MMO that a survival MMO that takes place on private servers. It's it's a good winter game. It's very grindy, and uh, I think I'll be making some videos of some PvP when we get to that point. Do do, do you play alone? Uh, I play with a group of guys. Yeah, that's much more fun. I played it alone, and that's one of the games that you just simply yeah. can't play alone. What is it called again? Life is futile. When I first picked it up, I played it alone, and it, it it's impossible to play alone. Basically, um, yeah. you got to be in a group. And who's it developed by? Uh, some Russian guys oh, with a with a bear that lives in their office. Oh god! Well, wait, like you're serious? Yeah, there's been developer diaries where the guy walks through the office showing off that stuff, and then there's just a big brown bear, a black bear, sitting there going, like, so fucking the whole, badass man." The whole <laughs> I mean, it's Russian awful, but... bear thing always seems fake, but then. <laughs> They're always there. Um, all right, that's cool. Um, as far as myself goes, I have been streaming for 2016. I'm doing streaming every day except for you know holidays and random stuff like that. But if I'm if I'm home, I'm every day at least an hour. Usually, probably because you know work, normal life stuff. Only doing an hour during the weeks, but weekends could be three hours and stuff like that. Right now, I'm playing Dead Space. Super cool game, and anything that I play is uploaded to my YouTube. Uh, so, minus actually, I might play. I might be starting to play Smash, and I don't know how I feel about uploading Smash to YouTube with the whole Nintendo BS copyright stuff. So, but you can check me out on my tw uh, trips. It's just trips uh, Twitch. I I totally screwed that up. It, you can check me out on Twitch. It's trips. Um, and YouTube is Trips Dota. I played a little bit of Dota earlier. That was the first stream. But yeah, doing probably, I want to aim for like 300. 300, you know, just giving myself MMR. some breathing room. 300 MMR <laughs> in Dota? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm trying to aim for 300, 300 uh, streams. But other than that, I think we will be back next week. Hopefully some news drops specifically to Overwatch. Hopefully they talk about some of the, you know, when beta's coming back. Give us all something to munch on a little bit. Maybe another Kaplan interview and he's going to have, we're, I mean, we're going for the Kaplan beard. I don't know. Mine's not gray. I'm but, convinced, dude. I'm convinced. Yeah. The thing is, they, are we going to, wait, I, if, if Kaplan shaves, does that mean we got to shave? <laughs> I'm not. <Dude>. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this abomination has to be hidden around a lot of hair. I, I actually thought about, you know, going like just this and then dropping the all the air hair bit to here. So it's all hidden. But, so you're just like a hairball. Yeah. <laughs> like Uncle from the Adams family. Yeah. Uh, it. Yeah. From, is that from, what that? Cousin It? Is cousin that what it, it is? Yeah. It Uncle, is an It. It's true, yeah. Uncle Fester's bald, isn't it? Yeah, he's yeah. like teal and bald. Whatever. Anyways, I think that wraps it up for us, guys, this week. Uh, we will be back, back next week, hopefully, if not uh, following week. Who knows? Keep you, uh, Follow the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Follow the Twitter. 
follow all that good stuff. We're gonna be on. Where are we gonna put this one on SoundCloud? We have we put the last one on SoundCloud. Yep. We're trying to branch out a bit. I want to stream eventually, um, but we're focused on you know getting some of the other stuff. This is still beta for us, just like it is beta for Overwatch. So until the next cast, see you guys and everyone here at Watchpoint. Have a good night.